Happy Friday, welcome to the industry. I'm excited to be back. Last week we had a little bit of a pause and I'm gonna talk about that um, in a second, what I was doing last weekend. But welcome to the industry if you are new inside of the Facebook group or if you're listening to this on the podcast or YouTube. The industry is my weekly show that I do every Friday at 10 a.m. unless I'm doing something more exciting than the industry and I can't be here. Um, where I come on and I do some Q&A. Sometimes we have guests come on and our guests are from our community Community. A lot of the times the guests that we bring on are clients or we have some upcoming guests of just my favorite people in the industry that I love to share in our community. So every Friday is something different, but I love to just bring topics and people and conversations that I think are interesting and valuable for you guys. Um, we do this live in the Facebook group, but we also repurpose and share on the podcast. If you don't know, um, the Stephanie and Houston show is my podcast. And we also, Jake and I were just talking about this, you guys, Jake, repurposes and like re-edits these these videos and puts them on YouTube and if you haven't been on our YouTube and to see these crazy edits like I'm they're they're not well they're crazy they're really good like it they look so good and I'm they're they're underrated because I don't really have a huge following on my YouTube because it's just nothing like it's never been a priority for me but we've been putting all these episodes on YouTube and they look different so even if you're like oh I I you you just want to go look at what they look like they look so so cool and so just FYI everything is also repurposed on YouTube and I know sometimes it's easier to listen to something on the YouTube than a Facebook replay so we're in all of those all of those places um yeah so hope you guys are doing well I see Pearl is on Sarah's on and Zoom amazing so I'm going to start off and just share a little bit of so last week we didn't have an episode because it was my first ever slash first of the year one-to-one -one in person VIP weekend with a client Leanne and Leanne is actually going to be on the industry I think it's next week it doesn't matter in the next couple of weeks um, so I I live in Ontario and I'm very close to Toronto but it's still a travel um, and Leanne was from Florida Leanne came to Canada for the first ever time and we had a one to it was her first time in Canada which is pretty crazy um, we had a one-to-one -one weekend in Toronto together and it was just like honestly I knew it was going to be amazing and I knew it was going to be like literally it's called the best weekend ever time of your life but I came home with this just feeling of like Steph like let's go like this is it like let's go bigger let's do these things even more like and Leanne and I will talk about it when I bring her on the industry but joining this in-person weekend was the first offer that Leanne ever bought from me. So I put, I put this out in November and she saw one story slide, the first story slide, and she responded and she's like, I'm in. She's like, I've been waiting for the perfect offer. I know I want to work with you in a high level kind of way. Like th this is it. And it just, it was so crazy because she bought that and then she joined the collective and then she joined other things. So it was just, it was really cool to see someone like make that big of an investment, that big of a move, that big of, you know what I mean? Like, like that's where I'm going to start with you. You know, a 25 K weekend, I'm going to go to a country I've never been to before. Like it was like, it was just so cool to see that. And then to have that weekend with Leanne and be like, there's, and I know, I, I know this, but it was cool to see it like actually happen of like, there are people who want to go big from the start. There are people who are like, yeah, I'm going to fly here and go do a thing. Like there are people who are that brave, that courageous, that bold, like that at that level from the, from the beginning with, with working with you. And I think that that's, that's just really, really cool. And so, um, yeah, obviously when, when I bring Leanne on, we'll have like a conversation from her side of all of it as well, which I think will be really cool. But, um, at the end of last year, you guys, I said the biggest regret from last year was not doing in-person stuff because I used to do in-person stuff more locally, um, but last year I didn't do any. And then when I, as soon as I realized, like, why did I not do that? That's crazy. I put it out at the end of last year. And then right now we have essentially three out of four one-to-one -one weekends booked. And we're also filling a spot for a mastermind, a, ma a group weekend in Toronto. So I'm like, it's, you know, this is exciting obviously for me, but the reason I share this is like the moment you realize, like, I wish I would have done something or the moment you realize, like, I want to do something, you can literally just decide 
and put it out there and then all of a sudden you you, you set yourself up and, it, and it's happening. So whatever that looks like for you, like maybe that's the sign to put out the offer, do the thing and just like literally put it out there. Like what's, nothing is in our way except our own thoughts or doubts or whatever it may be. And so Bridge is on in the Zoom right now with me and like Bridge it, at the end of March, early April, we're doing our in-person weekend and I'm just like, wait, I'm going to stop doing everything and just do this for the rest of my life. <laughs> like, what, what is this? No, but just like, I'm, uh, and going on a little bit of a tangent right here, but I know it's exciting or it's valuable. Um, we had a collective community call this week where it was just kind of like, we're now going to be doing these regularly in the collective where kind of every month or in between things, I basically just say like what's coming up and, and summarizing things. And I was saying to the collective, um, like it feels so good to be in a space right now in my business where it's like, I'm, you know, I'm really focused on, you know, going wider again, right? Like growing the audience, more people, but I'm also at the same time really focused on those deeper connections with people, right? And so the one-to-one -one weekends or the mastermind weekends, is like I get to really connect in person with people really close, right? It feels so good to have a business where it's like I can have programs and masterclasses with as many people as possible. But then it's like, I get on, you know, even with my high level mastermind right now, we plug in, we have a call, like you guys are my people. Like I love that feeling of as many people as possible, big wide impact. But then I love to be really deep and close with the people that, that I'm close with. And so you might already be experiencing some kind of level of this, but it feels really cool when you have a desire to like have a big impact, but you still at, at the same time, it's like your higher level, your closer proximity people become even closer because it's like, it, it's actually not as many people who know me have access to my close world. So the people who do, it's like, I feel like even in the last couple of months, I've noticed like I'm, I'm closer with my private clients. I'm closer with my mastermind. Cause it's like, you guys are the people in my world that we're actually doing one-to-one -to -one time together. And so it just feels really, really good. It's always felt really good, but it almost feels like this year there's another evolution of all of it, which it just like, I'm, I'm so happy. So that's, that's kind of the vibe. Um, and I think what else just talking about the month. Yeah. Yeah. What's up this month? What are we and Jake is here. You guys know Jake is here. Well, Jake should be right here on camera. Yeah, <laughs> um, so we're in February, it's February 3rd. So this month, if you guys are in the challenge with me, let me know in, in the comments. We, we are doing a 28 day challenge, which is, it's so freaking good. It is so exciting. If you are watching this right now and you're not in the challenge, get in the challenge. Like as soon as we opened up the Facebook group and opened up officially the challenge, um, in the group, it, I was just like, I'm so happy. I decided to do this. It is a lifestyle challenge. It is for you no matter where you're at in business and you don't even have to be in business. It really is like, let's stay accountable to these little daily tasks, the, you know, things like gratitude, even like gratitude, movement, um, mindset, positivity. Like it, it's a really good mix. And these are things that I do consistently, but this challenge is also challenging me because I'm like, I'm doing this with you. I'm posting, I'm, I'm staying accountable. And it just, the, the challenge is, you're the queen of habits. Yes. The challenge is really like, the, like it, it's almost like bringing me back to the days of when I started my business and it was about fitness and it was about like, like positivity and, and just feeling good and, and motivation. And it, it feels like I'm where I'm at in my life and my business because of these things, because of those things. And so it feels really cool at this level to like bring people back to that. And we're literally only on day three and, and it, and it's so amazing and you can absolutely still join us. It's going to be all of this month. We're doing a giveaway and we're thinking about how we can make this an ongoing thing going forward, um, in our world. So if you're in it now, it, it's a good idea to be in it now because when it turns into something bigger, like it will just be a smoother process. So that's what we're doing. And then this was on the 31st, but we officially had the first ever episode of Heart on Your Sleeve go out, which is my documentary series. And so what this basically is, is when you join this, you get one movie per month for the rest of the year. If you haven't bought this yet, you can still join it and you will get last month's movie right away, like as soon as you sign up. And we're really excited. Like one, the feedback from the movie that was released this month was just 
really amazing. I think it's the whole point of this is to bring you guys in like the behind the scenes of things that I am still navigating or challenges or just like the, the more of like the human side of me. And I think that well, based off of the feedback from this episode, it was it's really refreshing. I feel like to see this side of someone who's successful, like we often forget like, oh, yeah, I can still have these thoughts or doubts or fears, but I, it can still um, it, it, it can still I can still be successful. And so I'm excited because honestly, like even the the movie that we'll do in February, we were, Jake and I were already talking about this, like it's going to look so different than than movie one. So it's just like one, it's going to be so valuable, but you're going to see the evolution of just the creation process, which is going to be um, really awesome. So that's something that we did decide you can still buy throughout the year. And then as soon as you buy, you'll get all of the the ones that previously that previously happened. Um, movie that we're doing in February. Like what? Like casually just creating movies. I love that. So that's good enough. Yeah. Jake's like, let that. That's enough that's for the people. Yeah. I was just thinking your uh, your midday gratitude. Do you know what you're gonna do for that day three? I don't. Well, I know I'm gonna do it today because I have to. Okay. But I think one of the one of the things that I that I want to share about, and I'll post it in the group, obviously, but. I just feel insanely grateful for the community in my world. Like I feel so grateful that we get to do something like this and you guys come on and hang out with me, whether it's live or you watch the replay, like the free community. I'm obsessed with the collective community. I'm obsessed with my mastermind. Like how I was just saying, like I'm obsessed with every different kind of dynamic in my world. Like I'm so, I just feel so grateful for the people that are in my world. So that's going to be one of the things that is definitely on my my gratitude for today. Yeah. Okay. Stay tuned for that. One. Stay tuned for that one. So, I think Jake Jake is my prompt guy. So Jake has some things that he's going to share with me and then we'll just see what comes out of my mouth. This is what's yeah. going to happen. I went through and I found uh, you know, let's say the top coaches that show up in Google. A variety of coaches, entrepreneurs, um, you know, mindset, money, variety of topics, but I grabbed some quotes. Uh, and so this one I found from Tony Robbins. So on his Instagram, he wrote, the only limit to your impact is your imagination and commitment. And I just wanted you to riff on this a little bit, j just to see what you think, because a lot of these quotes, there's stuff that I've heard you say, and yeah. a lot of these people are people that you do not know. No, yeah. Oh, well, so the thing right here is like, what is it? The, the limit to your impact yeah, is imagination. Okay. I mean, imagination is our mindset. So if, if you don't believe that you can do something, you're not going to do it. But if your imagination is wild and your mindset is, is a growth mindset and you're willing to take risks and you're willing to dream big, then you're going to do big. Then the impact will actually be big because your imagination, your mindset is big. Like literally to what I was just saying about how I was like, oh, I'm sad that last year I didn't do in-person stuff as soon as I decided. That's a mindset thing, right? So I 100% I agree and commitment. And I love that he said imagination and commitment because when you let your mind go wild, your imagination go wild, your mindset go wild, and you're batshit committed, like, I mean, that's literally the recipe. That's how I built my business. And, and I can see, and, and I'm sure many of you can agree, like any time that you've let yourself get in your head, you've, you've not lived up to your potential and that impacted your results. But then you could probably notice another time where you were feeling so good, you were in the great mindset and then you created something amazing and you were committed at the same time. So it's like, I, I mean, this is what it is over and over again. And I, you know, the more successful I get, the more I really see that it is mindset. It is, it is a mindset because one, it's, it's a mindset, but two, the way that we're able to build businesses today, it's so fast. So all it takes is you to decide, I'm going to go do something and, and you can make it happen. But if you're in your head, then you're not going to take that action. So like we're building businesses in a way where you can literally just decide you post something on social media and it blows up. It takes one second, but what's the thing in the way from what's the thing in the way from you taking that one second to put it out there, your head. And we're all guilty of it. So it is the mindset work over and over again. And this is also why 
I decided to do the 28 day challenge and why I want to figure out how to make it an ongoing thing because the 28 day challenge is to keep us in check with positivity and a good mindset. And it's so easy to be like, oh, whatever, I don't need to do my gratitude today or whatever, but it's like those little things are the things that can make a big difference in terms of like what you decide to do or not do, you know? So I like it. <laughs> um, so I found another one. So Gary B, uh, he says something similar in his own words, obviously, but he says, the only thing holding you back is you. Um, and so I found that kind of similar to imagination and commitment. I mean, yeah. it's, it's your, it's you deciding it. You know, it's, does anyone ever think about this? And I think about this very often is like, we're all just living life through our lens. We were like, this experience right now is like how you experience this is because of the way that you see the world. The way that you see your business is because of the way that you see the world. The way that you see social media is because of the, you know what I mean? So it's like, of course I'm the only thing in my way. So it's like, so this is why it's the mindset work is so important because if you see things in a not so good way, the only one way to change that is for you to change you, you know? And so this is why. I believe in mentorship so much. This is why I believe in self-awareness so much is like, if I just need to see things in a different way to create something bigger or better then yeah, I want to learn how to see things in a different way. Yeah. I want to have a mentor or whoever to be able to be a mirror for me. So then I could be like, Oh, like, wow, I was limiting my mind. You know what I mean? So we are always the things in our way. So it's like, what can we do? similar to like what I was just saying to make sure that we're constantly seeing things through the most positive, empowering lens and to be open to feedback to when someone calls us out, whether it's a coach or a friend or whatever, be like, Hey, that's a shitty way of looking at things. And you, us being open to be like, thank you. Now I can see things, but but something that I think happens is like we get defensive of like, I don't want to be shown if I'm wrong or if I'm thinking about things negatively, like we, we make it mean something bad about us, but it's like, I want to be open to that feedback. If that means me learning how to be better. So then I have a better quality of life and then I'm able to create more success. So we are the things in our way hundred <laughs> percent. And so this, this one's from Mary Forleo. I uh, hope I'm pronouncing that right. So she was named by Oprah to be the thought leader of the next generation. Um, she's a public figure, entrepreneur. She said, in order to prioritize what matters most, you need to decide what matters most. Mm, yep. So basically saying like, actually decide what matters, like say it out loud, decide instead of like, kind of like winging it. Uh, is that kind of like, like in, yeah, I think, I think to, I mean, to me, I saw it as like setting your sights on what matters most. So when, if you don't have time for something, you're not prioritizing it. Right. So you haven't actually decided that it matters. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's also just like the actually saying to yourself, what matters to me? What is important to me? Like, like what are the things? And then it's like, these are the things that I, I prioritize and I focus on. This is why, I mean, I love that. And this is why it's like, this is why I'm about the basic things because I know these are the things that matter the most fitness, health, sleep, emotional intelligence, positivity, all of these things like that matters because that affects everything else, right? Even like related to business. Okay. When we build our businesses, what is actually the thing that's going to generate sales content? This is why I'm all about content. If that's the main thing, then that should be the main focus. That's the thing that's going to lead to the sales. So I think that it's like knowing what those things are and prioritizing it. And huge piece here too, is I think self-awareness of like when something happens or we're giving attention to something that actually doesn't matter, we could be like, wow, I spent half a day on this thing and it actually doesn't matter. Or I spent all this time and energy worrying about this thing, but like, wait, this isn't even on the list of things that are a priority. I'm going to get like deep here for a minute, but <laughs> I was having a bad day a couple weeks ago or a bad couple days. And I was stressing about something that I knew didn't matter. And I think Eric was like, I think he was at work or something. And I don't know why this thought came into my mind, but it's also something that Gary V says, but it, it was literally like, Steph, if Eric didn't come home today, you would not be stressed about this. And like, I know I went deep right there, but I was like, it, that took me out of worrying about that thing that didn't matter because I was like, wait, 
What actually matters is the few basic things of the people that I love and, and, and the health and the, the people that mean the most to me and like my mental health and my happiness. So it's like if you find yourself stressing about something or worrying about something and you know like this ultimately doesn't matter, sometimes it's like, whoa, what actually matters? Like what would actually, it, what would, if something happened today and I would forget about this problem, what would it be? And it just puts things into perspective. And sometimes it's like, whoa, that's, that's a dark, moment because it is and I don't want to think about it but it's also just like perspective is everything so yeah <laughs> like how did I get into this what was that about um, well, uh, so good <laughs> hi Lou I see Lou jumped on the zoom Hannon says in our projections of what others think of us stop us uh, this is I'll just speak to this because I think that this is so huge is what we think our social media followers think of us, what we think the people who watch our social, our, our Instagram stories think of us, what we think our peers in group programs or our mastermind think of us, what we think our coaches think of us. It's all what we think, what we think other people think. It's not even what is true. It's what we think, what we think. And that can hold us back if it is just a not so good, a not so good thought. You know what I mean? And so I've, I've often found myself even like, I would get caught up of like, and I said this in Heart on Your Sleeve, like are people just watching me waiting for me to fail? I completely made that up in my mind. Like no one has ever said that to me. But that stopped me from doing certain things because I'm like, well, what? Like, but I made that up in my mind. So it's like, like Hannon was saying, like the self-awareness of like, well, okay, I have this thought, but this is not even true. So let me just like work through it and then keep going. You know what I mean? But this is something that is interesting because projections happen no matter what. But when we're on social media nonstop, we're constantly seeing people who we don't really know and we're assuming what they think or we're assuming what their relationship is with us. And so it's just to notice, you know, obviously we can never know, you know, what is the, the difference between the thought and what's actually true and to notice where those projections might be holding us back, you know, and this is why I, try my best to really like focus on staying in my own lane, but also having a small but powerful network of people who actually know me. You know, it's like I, who are the people who actually know me? Well, like those are the people that I'm going to take advice from. No offense. I'm not going to take advice from a stranger on the internet. Like you don't know me. I don't know you, but I'm going to take advice from my mentor who's known me for five years. I'm going to take advice from Eric. I'm going to take advice from Jake and the team and whatever, like you actually know me. So it's like this discernment piece. And sometimes we can get really caught up when there's a lot of noise and even clients in your world. Like, you know, and so it's like holding all of that, which is so huge. I used to tell myself this story that there are some people that don't want me to win. And it's like, but like, where did that even come from? Right? I'm like, I'm way too busy to think about what others think. Yeah. Stick to the facts and what is actually done versus what we make it mean. Huge. Okay. I've got another one. You've got another one. Um, so this is Tim Ferriss. He's an author of the four hour work week. Um, kind of a big book. He has a, a podcast, but this is not a quote from him, but one that he chose that represent, said represents him. So uh, it just starts like this. And now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. Oh, I like that. Do you guys hear? Now that you don't have to be perfect, you can be good. I, I, oh, my God. Like, first of all, I love that Jake just comes and he knows exactly, like, what is the vibe for me to talk about. But, like, success is not about perfect success is about am i willing to be brave am i willing to make mistakes am i willing to keep growing when i think about any successful person it's not that they're perfect yes they have a zone of genius yes they're good but it's like they're willing to keep growing they're willing to get feedback they're willing to make mistakes they're willing to try new things and then fall and then get back up you know what i mean like even like being a coach i said this somewhere this week, I can't remember where, but I was like, like no one wants a mentor that's perfect. You want a mentor that it like is still in the game so then they can support you as you're in the game. Like the point of mentorship is to like figure things out together and, and, and you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be like, I'm willing to do this with you, willing to lead, willing to have conversations. You know what I mean? And so I think we do put a lot of pressure, but the, the pressure of being perfect or being a certain way, then we're not living up to our potential. Then we're not being creative. Like I know for me, I, 
I want to have fun and I want to feel free and I want to be creative. Fun, free, creative, those that you can't be trying to be perfect if you want to have fun, be free, and be creative. But the reason that I built this is because I have fun, because I'm creative, and I just go do it. You know what I mean? So I like it. Is there anything else? Yeah, I've got a few more. Okay, good. <laughs> I told Jake, I'm like, I only want to talk for 15 minutes today on the industry. And I'm like, here we are. I'm like, let's do this for hours. <laughs> So this is uh, Brendan Burchard. So uh, Forbes called him the world's leading high performance coach. So whatever that means, but <laughs> Forbes thought he was cool. Um, so he wrote, uh, when you're around other people who are on the same path and who bring willingness and positivity, things change. Yeah. Which I, you know, I think that's coaching. In I don't even know how many quotes, maybe that's four now, doesn't matter. How basic are all of these? And I mean this in the best way. Be positive, be committed, have a good mindset, stick around people that are good. Like it's like, but why, why is this all so profound and why are like the most successful people saying this is because, I mean, bringing it back to the challenge that's basic, people struggle with the basics. Oh yeah, just surround myself with, you know, the quality people. Oh yeah, just be in a high level mastermind. Oh yeah, just stay around positivity. Oh yeah, just like... These, it's so, it's such common sense, but we struggle. I wonder why we struggle with it. Not even struggle with consistency. Like, why do we struggle doing what we know is right? Why? Like, I'm just like self sabotage, fear, like all these different things, or like, I mean, afraid to, like, this is probably what it is. If I do all the things that I know are right, what if I do them and it doesn't work? That's probably the thing. If I surround myself with positive people and I don't change or I don't create something, then what it, you know what I mean? Like, I think that that's a lot of what it is for people. Um, I could teach these humans a thing. Yeah, I have, I have better quotes than these people. Like, what is this? We need me to be Google Googleable. This is our next task. Um, taking on people's values and vision and making it ours. Write a book. Yeah, there's, there's so many things. Um, but, and, and I, I think I said it before you read that, like why I'm like, who are the people, who are the positive people in my life that are, they're doing something good in their own life. So they hold values that are similar to me and they're doing their own thing. So they're modeling. That keeps us accountable, right? And so I just think it's like, it's whether it's mentors or people in your life, but also who are you following on social media? I think a lot of people are on social media following people that aren't even beneficial to them. And I think that we just do it through habit. Like, are you actually only following the people that you actually find valuable and find positive? Like that can make such a huge difference. And the way that we're constantly scrolling, if you're scrolling and you're like, I don't even like this person or it triggers something like, why are you, why are you consuming that? I think that it's, yes, it's the big things. Like who are you investing in and learning from, but like, who are you consuming on a daily basis? That's actually not productive. And I think that holds a lot of people back. I love that. You know, actually, let me, Lou just asked a really good question. And one of my clients literally asked me this exact thing yesterday. She was like, like, who, who would you hire? Like who, like, and I'm like, she's like, who do you, is there anyone else that you would like hire? And I, I have a hard time and it's not like there's, there, there's people that aren't good or like, there's so many good mentors and, and I probably, there's some that I don't even know, but it's like. I actually do find it hard to like find besides my current mentor, like who, who else should I learn from? Like, and again, I'm not saying that people aren't good. It's just like, Oh, like, you know, I even made an Instagram story on my other, my second Instagram today of like, you know, like I'm someone who I have such high standards for myself and I go and I do big things. So like someone to learn from has to be like calibers beyond me. You know what I mean? And so it's just interesting. Um, do I go for any, uh, for anyone else for advice? Honestly, like, so Cassie Howard, most of you know Cassie and she's going to be on the industry in a few weeks. I met her this weekend. She's someone that like, I was just like, she really gets it the way that I get it. So it wasn't even like I asked her for advice, but we had some really good conversations where it was like, I literally know what you mean and you know what I mean, you know? So it's like, it, it's like things like that, but on a professional level or more of like, a yeah, um, like a formal level right now there's, there's not, but I, I would love to be able to find 
someone or some, you know what I mean? Or I'm like, oh yes. But I, the other thing that I will say too, when I was talking to my client about this is like, I don't think that we always need someone or need someone else. Like, and I feel so good with, with my mentor. I feel so good with my small support system that it's like, I'd rather make those connections deeper than necessarily have to go find. So sometimes it's like totally go find someone else or be in multiple rooms. I totally stand for that. But sometimes it's like, if you're good with someone, it's like just go deeper and there's other things to explore. So that's kind of how I see it. Um, okay. Were you going to say? Oh, I like what Bridget just said there. My new personal trainer is great, but her mindset is awful. And I'm thinking I need a new trainer because of this. I feel like she's just as important. Yeah. Picking a business a hundred percent. And this is why I mean to all, maybe the fitness people watching this, this is why people will pay big money for you because it's not just the fitness plan. It's the, who are you? So like bridge is looking on the lookout for, oh, I think that you do like in person doesn't matter, but it's like, it's not just like whoever personal trainer it's, are you the one for me it is who you are going to expand me outside of what you're telling me to do in the room or in the gym. Like I think a hundred percent, like that, that is everything. And it makes a difference. Like it could be the best workouts, but if something is off that impacts how you feel. So so big. Okay. So maybe we'll riff on one or two more things. We have, yeah, we have, uh, well, okay. Yeah, we have two more. Okay. Maybe, th maybe three, but we'll do quick. Okay. Um, so these next two kind of go in opposite directions. So this one's very, uh, I'd say grounded, but it's Grant Cardone. He's like a undercover billionaire. He owns real estate, just like, you know, all money oriented. But he says, um, if you want to create wealth, quit using these excuses. I don't have money. I don't have time. I don't have the right people. I'll never get my break. It's not meant to be. It can't happen for me. It takes money to make money. I'm too young or too old. I'm not smart enough. I mean, I agree with all of it. Like, I think that it's like, so what was the first part? If you want to be rich, if you want to create wealth, if you want to create wealth. Yeah. I mean, I think if you want to create wealth or you want to create any like impact or whatever, you have to have a growth mindset and all of those things are not a growth mindset. It's like, Oh, all the excuses are all the reasons why. And, and again, I think that those are made up stories in our mind. Like if we decide like I need to have this to create wealth or I need to have this to be successful, then we're always going to find reasons why we can't. But if it's like, this is resourcefulness and it is mindset. It's like, if, if I, if I want to, and I'm going to do it no matter what, then I'm going to find a way and there, and there's nothing going to be in the way. Like, obviously there's going to be limitations and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, at the end of the day, if you want to make it happen, you make it, you just make it happen. So for many, I bet for everyone watching this, there's could have been a million reasons why you couldn't have done what you've done right now, but you decided. And so how exciting is it that there's also maybe another iteration to that of like, if that mindset got me here, what are the things that I'm in my mind right now that I'm deciding are going to stop me from getting to my next level? You know what I mean? So I like it. This is similar, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, it says, uh, um, so it's, it's deep up. Letting go of illusion is challenging because the you that wants to let go is part of the illusion. Letting go of illusion is challenging because the, the you that wants to let go is, is part of the, oh, okay. Yeah. It, again, this is what, when I was saying, like life is just what we see. Life is an illusion. Life is how we see it. So we see ourselves the way that how we decide to see ourselves. And so if, if you're trying to like change, change the illusion or change the perspective, you have to change the way that you see yourself, which is, that's just a big mind fuck, right? Like, and this is why the mindset work, the identity work, the self-awareness work is so important because we like, I see myself right now, the way that I see myself and that's not the way that you see me. And that's the, and that's not the way that I necessarily actually am the way that you see yourself right now. That's how you see yourself. Right. And so like we, but we think that that's real, but it might not actually be real. So it's just to like, I don't even know. It's just to like the self-awareness, but like, how do you, how do you want to see yourself? Or it's not only that, I think it's how are you seeing yourself in your life right now in a way that is not actually true or a way that's not serving you. I think it's sometimes easier to identify that is like, Oh, I've been seeing myself as not good enough or unsuccessful or this or this. And one, that's not even true. So it's like, Whoa, I made that up in my mind. Then that self-awareness can be like, what is, what is actually true or how do I want to see myself? Which is so big. And then cool. kind of bringing it back 
we'll end on this one maybe, but okay. um, so this is Russell Brunson. He's the co-creator of Click or yeah, ClickFunnels. Um, but he says uh, it's important to take time to step back to refocus and remember why you started. Yes, <laughs> I could use that advice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this these these are all coming from highly successful people, and I think the fact of like. When we're constantly on a journey to like go, go, go next thing, it's so easy to forget like why did I start? What actually matters? What was the feeling at the very beginning? And I think that that, that can then light a spark when maybe you're on your journey already doing successful things but maybe you're frustrated or the next thing that you're working towards hasn't happened yet and you like lose that motivation to bring yourself back to like the day one, what was it about? And you most likely still have that in you to like reignite, reignite the fire. So, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think, I think that these themes will always be the themes in life and success. And, and it's like, it just goes to show that like, you know what I mean? It's just like the same thing, but said in a different way. And I think for years we've all, we've always been saying this, but it's just like, these are the things that matter. And I think like the messaging changes over time. And then it's to like apply that messaging to your life and your business. And, and when that lands, then, then it makes the actual impact. So I, I love this. Um, yeah, nothing is new. How one hears it is what makes the difference. I know. This is so good, you guys. This was so good. Anything? I think that's awesome. 40 some minutes of riffs, of quotes. I like this. So... What do I, what else do I have to say before we close off? Um, I think I said it all at the beginning, the things happening this month, you guys know about, um, next week, next couple of weeks, we now have guests coming on again, which is pretty exciting to switch things up, but I've loved to do the, um, the solo like riffs like this feel really fun, but we have some guests coming up. Leanne, who I did the weekend with is coming up. Cassie Howard is coming up. So lots of fun connections and yeah, that's all she wrote. That's all she wrote. We're done. You said same time, same place. Same time, same place, 10 a.m. You, um, I'm not sure what we'll do if we'll have people come on when we do guests on Zoom, but we'll figure that one out. But it is fun when I'm when it's solo, like to come on the Zoom if it feels fun, or you can just be on the live. But that's all she wrote. So I'll see you guys. Change your schedule. Yes, make this a habit. If I can do it. If I can do this every day or every Friday at 10, you guys can. Okay, so that's it. I'll see you guys next week. I'll see you where we are in all the other places. Thank you guys for being here. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.